Hello. I welcome you all to session seven of our discussion. In the previous session, we sought to discuss the issues that relate to taxation of employment income, which is one class of income of persons. Today, we'll be looking at the second one, which is how to determine business income and therefore taxation of business income. So at the end of the session, you should be able to clearly define what constitutes business income and also how carryover losses issues are dealt with. Also, if you have a segmented business, how do you deal with your tax issues? Now, when you talk about business income, we are referring to all the gains that one realizes from his business activity, to so all the income that you make from sales and also from the provision of services. And business here, we are referring to three main things. It could be your trading activities, it could be from your professional activities or your vocational activities. So it's not only restricted to trading activities. You could be a professional lawyer working in your chamber. That may be your business. And therefore, all income that you make in the course of discharging your business is realized as what? Business income. Now, Section 5 of Act 896, which is the Tax Act or the Income Tax Act, said clearly that any income that you make from business within the time period, so within a year of assessment, all the gains and profit that you make from your business is deemed as your business income and therefore must be subject to tax. It includes the service fees that people pay, the consideration that you receive from selling off your inventory, the gains that you make when you sell off a capital asset, and also any consideration you may have received on the restriction of your capacity. So sometimes the government may restrict the use of some asset and in and because of that, give you compensation or consideration. If there's such arrangement, the consideration so received may be deemed as part of your business income. Any gift that you also receive related to your business is also referred to as part of your what? Your business income. Again, all the gains that you make when you sell off a depreciable asset are also part of your business income. So in effect, what we are saying is that all amounts related to the business so received are all part of your business income. Now, let's look at the exclusions from your business income. Now, generally, there are exemptions from taxation, which under the Section 7 of our Act, which is Act 896, uh, they are clearly stated what income is actually exempted from taxation. Example of that is what? Income of a cocoa farmer is exempted from tax. If you operate within a free zones area, your business is exempted from tax for 10 years. So we'll look later at what actually goes into the exemptions. But note that those exemptions as granted under Section 7 are all excluded from what? From business tax. Again, if there is any payment in respect of a final tax or final withholding, then that payment is also not part of your business income. Example, if you pay final withholding tax on some uh, revenue you are expected to receive, then the amount withheld will not form part of your income, income from business because you've already paid the due tax on that portion of the income. Now, an amount that is also included in the calculation of income from employment, if you have already added some amount to your employment income, you will not again add the same to your, your business income. Now, the Act recognizes three main forms of businesses in Ghana. So it's either your business is a sole trading business, partnership business, or what? Or a company. Now, if it's a sole trading business, then the business is not liable to pay tax. Rather, it is the sole trader who is supposed to pay tax. And therefore, the business is not taxed separately from the sole trader. Whatever gains or profit made by the business 
will be deemed as gains of the sole proprietor and therefore the sole proprietor as a person would have to pay the tax according to the individual tax schedule. If it's a partnership business, again, a partnership business is not deemed as a distinct entity from the partners and therefore any gains or profit from the partnership business is deemed as profit for the partners. So you share the gains to the various partners and then tax the various partners according to the individual tax schedule. Now, if there's any salary that has been paid to a partner, it will be added to the gains the partner made. If there's any interest on capital, it's the same way it will be added to the gains. If there's capital allowance, the capital allowance is not granted to individual partners. Rather, it is granted to the business and therefore deducted from the uh, business income. Now let's look at this example. Naya Kuman is a computer programmer who obtained a bachelor's from the University of Ghana. Uh, before 2018, she was employed, but afterwards she, she worked independently in her own premises, which she acquired at 65,000. Now during the year ended 31st December 2019, her income so generated was 80,000. Then the expenditure has been outlined below. Expenditure, business proportion of power, she purchased computer, motor vehicle, telephone expenses, fuel, bank charges. These were the expenditure related to the income that she generated. We have to compute the taxable income and then the tax liability for Nanaya. Now, in the year 2019, so when you look at 2019 year of assessment, the revenue she generated from the data was what? 80,000. Then, the expenses that will be allowed for reduction are there. We have what? Power and water as related to the business telephone expenses, fuel, bank charges, so they will all be allowed deduction. And then the capital allowance. Note that the purchase of computers, purchase of motor vehicles are not expenses that are allowed for deduction, because so these are capital assets. Rather, you will grant capital allowance, which is more like the depreciation on those equipment. And you know how the classification for capital allowance is done. So this will give us the Example income from business as well, 13,830. Having deducted all these expenses from the revenue, it gives us income to be subjected to tax at 13,830. But remember, because Nanaya is operating as a sole trader, this income will be deemed as income for Nanaya and therefore will be subjected to the individual tax schedule. So, this is how the tax schedule is. In any exams, the tax schedule will be given to you. The first 3,456 is not taxed, so the rate is zero. The next 1,002, the rate is 5%. The next 1,680, the rate is 10%. Any excess is at 17.5. So this tax rate will be given. So the first one is free, so that's dash. The second one, after this, the second 1,000 or the next 1,200, so you add up to this, it gives us 4, 6, we subject the 1,200 to 5%, which is 60 tax. So it means that as at this point, it's only 60 tax. Then the next one, six, eight, remember this is a tax schedule, which will be given in any exams. So the next one, eight, 60, will be subjected to 10%, giving us a cumulative of 6,336. And then the 10% of this gives us one, six, eight, giving us a cumulative 60 plus this of 228. After adding all, you realize that there's still some left because you need to get the 13, 8, 30. So we need 7, 4, 9, 4 to add up to these first three to get the 13, 8, 30. And that is subjected to 17.5 tax rate. And then when you compute 17.5 tax rate on this, it gives us 1311. You add to 228 and it gives us 1539. So that is the tax to be paid on the business income of the sole trader. Now, if it's a company, remember companies are share persons and therefore the company as a body will be taxed separately from the shareholders. So the company will be taxed and the dividend paid to the shareholders will also then be taxed. 
Now, if the business for some reason decide not to distribute profit as dividend, the commissioner general would deem if portions of the profit should have been distributed as what? As dividend. So if he decides that, yes, this portion of the profit should have been given out as dividend, he would so declare it as dividend and tax the dividend. So where the commissioner general is satisfied that a company controlled by not more than five persons and the associate does not distribute to its shareholders as dividend a reasonable part of its income from all sources on the basis for a basis period within a reasonable time after the end of the period. The commissioner may, by noting writing, treat that portion of the business income as what? As dividend distributed and therefore charge the needed what? Tax on dividend distributed. Now let's look at the second scenario. It's just as the first one that we just discussed. The only difference is that he and Anaya did not form a sole trading business, but rather form NYC company. So the difference is here is a company and not a sole trading. Now, because she formed a company with the same data or information provided, you realize that yes, revenue will be the same as before, as we saw in the sole trader, the expenses are the same. But when it comes to taxation of companies or corporate entities, it is not subjected to the individual tax shed. Rather, all companies have a tax rate of what? 25% generally. But if you are in the hotel industry, you have 22%. But generally, your corporate tax rate is 25%. And that will give us 3, 4, 5, 8. Realize that because it's a company, you don't go by the individual tax schedule. Rather, you use the corporate tax rate of 25% to determine the tax to be paid because it's a company. Now, in business, there are two things. It's either you make profit or you make losses. When you make profit, the profit will be taxed. So government will benefit. What if you make a loss? Then the person operating the business also benefits because if I make profit and you tax me, if I make a loss, you should also allow me to benefit. But the government will not then pay the person the income. What the government will do is that for suffering the loss, you'll be allowed to carry forward the loss to reduce your tax liability for the next or the, the subsequent periods. So when you read section 17 of the Income Tax Act, it defines what a loss is. It is the excess of amount deducted in calculating the income that a person from the investment of business over the ones included in his income. So when your expenses exceed your income, then definitely you are making a what? A loss. Now, when you make a loss, that loss may be allowed to be carried over for a period of five years if you are within the priority sector. But if you are not within the priority sector, you can only carry over the loss for a maximum of three years. So the priority sectors are the mining, petroleum, energy and power, manufacturing, farming, agro-processing, tourism, ICT. So if you're operating within any of these industries, you'll be allowed to carry over your losses for a maximum of five years. If you are not, then you can do a maximum of three years. Now let's look at an example. Mining company started business 2016. In its first year of operation, it declared a loss of 800,000. Determine the number of years that they can carry forward the loss. Remember, they are in the mining industry and the mining is within the priority sector. And therefore, they can carry over the loss for five years, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021 year of assessment. It doesn't mean that for each of these years, the 800,000 will be deducted from the, the income. No, you have within five years, to make enough profit to clear. So it means that if in 2017 you're able to make a profit of 1 million, not all the 1 million will be subjected to tax. So we are allowed to deduct the 800,000 loss you suffered in the previous period and only tax 200,000. But if in 2017 you make a loss of, you make a profit of say 500,000, because that profit is less than the loss, the 500,000 will be cleared. So you will not pay tax in 2017. 
but you still have 300,000 to transfer to 2018 if profit is made. Now you have up to 2021 to make the needed profit to cover the loss that has been suffered in 2016. Now, Progress Limited is into the retail business. They make a loss of 250,000. How many years? Because retail business is not within the privacy sector. She can only do up to what? Three years, 17, 18, 19. Remember, you can only carry forward for three years if you are not within the priority sector. Now, let's look at businesses that have segments with different tax rates. So if you have a business, let's say it's a conglomerate. So uh, the, the business has different segments. Example is a desperate group of companies. They have businesses in manufacturing, in media, in other sectors. These sectors may have different tax rates. Now, when you make a loss in one sector, can it be transferred to offset a gain in another sector? Now, the law says that when you have different segments of the business, you can, only, you can only transfer the loss in one sector to the other if the rate in the other sector is the same as the tax rate in the sector you are transferring the loss from, or at a lower rate or at an exempt amount. So there are some sectors that are even exempted from tax all together. Example is the business of uh, a cocoa farmer. Whatever gains that you make as a cocoa farmer is not taxed. So you cannot be taxed as a cocoa farmer. Now let's look at this illustration. Uh, this company in 2016 year of assessment had their turnover as 1,500,000, but there were losses. Non-traditional export, they made a loss of 200,000. Losses from their local sales, 80,000 since 2016. In 2017, non traditional export, there was an income of 600,000, local sales income of 100,000. How do we deal with the losses that they suffered in 2016 when you come to the 2017 year of assessment? So in 2016, there was a loss of 200,000 for non traditional export. In 2017, fortunately for them, they've made a gain of 600,000. Now, this 600,000 will not be subjected to tax straight away. We will allow you to deduct to less the unrelieved loss from 2016, which is 200,000. And therefore, your chargeable income will only be 400,000. Now, if you put non traditional exports in order to encourage people to export more and do the non traditional product, it's only 8%. So it's an incentive for people to do that to go into exportation of non-traditional product. And 8% will be taxed on just the 400,000, not the whole of the 600,000. So you have to pay only 32,000 tax on that income. Local sales in 2016, there was a loss of 80,000. Fortunately for us in 2017, we've made an income of 100,000. Now the 80,000 loss suffered in the previous period will be allowed to be deducted. And therefore it's only the 20,000 that will be subjected to the normal corporate tax rate of 25. Remember, this is not into export. So therefore, your local sales is the normal corporate tax rate of 25, 25% 25 that will apply. So 25% of 20,000 gives us 5,000 CDs. Now, note that when you have an unrelieved loss from business or your business income, you may be allowed to deduct it from what? Any income from investment. So your business, you made a loss, but you have an investment income, which there is a gain. You are supposed to pay tax. Now, the law allows that the loss that you made from the business side will be used to reduce your investment income so that you pay less tax on the investment income. But it is not allowed vice versa, meaning when you make a loss on investment, you will not be allowed to transfer that loss to offset your business income. So let's look at this example. In 2017, business, we made a gain of, or there was an income of 100,000. Investment, there was a loss of what? 50,000. In 2018, business, there was a loss of 40,000. Investment, there was a gain of what? 120,000. Now let's determine how the losses will be treated. In 2017, business, there was what? 
a gain of 100,000. Now you cannot reduce the business income gain with the loss you suffered in 2017 on investment because losses on investment cannot be used to offset gains from business income according to the act. So you have to pay the tax on the full 100,000. So there's a taxable income. But when it comes to 2018, we made a gain of 120,000 from investment. 120,000. Now remember that losses from business can be used to offset gains from investment. So this 40,000 loss you made in 2018 from the business side can be used to reduce your income taxable from investments. And also the loss that we made the previous year can be carried forward. So the 2017 investment loss though could not be used to reduce our business income in 2017. It can be carried forward to 2018, so 50,000. And then the loss in 2018 from the business side can also be used to offset our gains from the investment side. So together you have 90,000. You take it off and you have what? 50,000 to be taxed in 2017. Now note again that losses from activities that are exempt from tax cannot be used to deduct profit from other business. Example is what I gave earlier. You have two businesses, manufacturing and then cocoa farming. You make a loss from the cocoa farming. Remember, cocoa farming is already exempted from tax. Now, the loss you make from the cocoa business cannot be used to offset your manufacturing income because the cocoa business is already exempted from tax. So any loss offered there cannot be transferred to what? To the manufacturing business. Now, let's look at this. A company made a total loss of 430,000 in 2016 year of assessment. Exploitation, the loss was 250. Hotel, the loss was 180. The company declared profit in 2017. Transport, they made 100,000. Hotel, 750,000. Now, let's see how these losses will be treated in 2017. Now, let's start with the hotel. Hotel, 2017, they made a gain of 750,000. Now, remember in 2016, there was what? A loss that they, they can carry forward of what? 180. So what do you do is just carry forward the loss of 180. And then that reduces the 750 to 570. So you only tax the 570. Remember, with all businesses in Ghana have a reduced tax rate of what? 22%. That is 125. And the motivation for this is to encourage tourism, right? Because most of the tourists would have to visit uh, hotels. So you, when you have more hotels, it boosts uh, your tourism income. And therefore, to encourage people to establish hotels, you give them a reduced tax rate. So they have 22%. And 22% of this is 125. Now let's come to transport operations. In the year 2017, there was a, a profit of 100,000. So that is the 100,000. But the loss from 2016 was 250,000, which is more than the 100. So we can only relieve 100. Thousand, we still have 150,000 to transfer to the next period, so it means that in the year 2017, there will be no tax to be paid. There will be no tax to be paid in the year 2017 on the business income from transportation, there will be no tax to be paid. So, the remaining 150,000. Uh, loss from the transportation business will be transferred to 2017. Note that, like I said, the third paragraph of uh, the first chapter of the act says that businesses that are into uh, that are into hotel do 22, but all other companies will have a tax rate of 25 percent. Will have a tax rate of 25 percent. All right, so kindly go through or go over what you have discussed and then send any questions that you may have to us. Thank you very much.